Well, good day, everybody. It's uh, uh, <laughs> Tuesday, I think. Yep, I think it's Tuesday. And uh, oh, I better check that. Yes, Tuesday, the 17th of January, and it's 7 o'clock here in Hobart, 9 in uh, Europe or France, and it's a little bit stormy here. It's kind of, well, not stormy, it's a funny feel. We've got this sort of northeasterly, it's been clear blue sky, but there's a northwesterly starting to come across from the other side of the island. It's been really hot today, and uh, yeah, strange. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. So um, the fleet uh, is doing interesting things, and I'll just first of all come to the leaderboard just to go over that because I'll explain a few things uh, what's happening. So Simon's flying away, five knots, 153, uh, uh, 163 miles in the last 24 hours. These positions uh, are currently, uh, what do we got? We're, we're still not rolled over yet. That's still on four o'clock, but um, all still relevant. Uh, 154 for Abolish. So uh, Simon's pulled away a little bit. Uh, Kirsten, 139, still a little bit uh, uh, slower than, than Abolish. They just rolled over then by the look of it. Yes, uh, they just rolled over. Where are we? Captain Good. Yeah, okay, so now they're current. And uh, Jeremy's still in Hobart. I'll explain all that in a minute. Still not on the slip. Still under quarantine control. And Ian Herbert Jones only made five nautical miles progress in the last 24 hours because he's been sailing back and forwards. Basically sailed back to the same position, but I'll explain that. Uh, Elliot's the same. He's actually just about sailing away from the course because he's nearly up to Fremantle. So distance made good in the last 24 hours. Only three nautical miles towards Hobart. And uh, Guy waits 140 miles, so that's not too bad. He's still on the move. And uh, uh, anyway, so that's why some of those numbers look strange, but they're actually correct. Okay, so we'll look at uh, Elliot and, um, and Guy for the moment. Guy's still under the line. He likes it down there, so we're not too stressed. He's close enough, and he's not in the rankings. So uh, he's got a nice breeze, as we predicted yesterday. The interesting one for now will be, um, you know, how close and how far has Elliot got to go towards uh, Fremantle. And he's done pretty well, but he's 119 miles to go. So we'll uh, start putting him on uh, ETAs uh, from tonight. Shortly after this, we'll do another ETA. But at that rate, uh, he's going to sail this pretty much in four knots. So that's... Uh, um, you know, that's uh, 100 miles in a day. He's got singers. So today's Tuesday evening, Wednesday evening, Thursday morning, I reckon. We'll probably see him. But let's have a look at the weather just to estimate his speeds first. We'll get rid of that. We'll get it over here so we can just see Guy as well. Yes, there's Guy. So um, we'll now toggle that through and just see what it looks like. Uh, he's got breeze. It's increasing coming a little bit around to the beam so that might uh, well that'll keep him going and it's going to back off a bit that's midnight tonight he's still Elliot's still got a breeze guy's still sailing but I'm mainly watching Elliot here then it's going to go quiet there was a quiet patch there that was just a little one this is early hours of tomorrow morning that was funny yeah it just comes out and goes boom that must be just dawn quite literally so a bit quiet but then he got a following breeze uh, so that's 24 hours from now uh, and then he's got more, plenty of breeze pulling him all the way up to Perth there. So that's good. Yeah, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning, Thursday midday. But anyway, we'll, we'll put him on a... Uh, oh, there goes quiet again. That's the 19th. So that's early hours again. That's just dawn. That's the heat of the land and all that sort of stuff. It'll be quite warm over there right now. So uh, looking good for Thursday. So he'll be happy about that. And uh, so will his well wishes when you get there. So if you're in Fremantle or wherever, I'm, I'll find out exactly where he's going. Um, you know, uh, border force are involved. He's got to enter and all those sorts of things, quarantine, customs. And um, uh, we'll keep you updated in case you want to go down and see him in, which would be fun. Anyway, and Guy's fine there. There's no big blows coming. He's got a, a reasonable run, so all is good for Guy. Uh, now we'll come back and have a look at uh, where Ian's been going. I said to, had a few emails, I said, oh, is Ian all right? You know, is something wrong with his boat? Or, and I said, nope, Ian is just a gentleman sailor that doesn't like going to windward. Nothing wrong with the boat. He's quite sensible. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, let's have a look. It's been challenging, but it's getting uh, a little bit more gentle down here for him at the moment. Oops, it is there. Um, so yeah, he's been, I'll put his track on if you can see where he's been here. Uh, I don't know whether you can see that, but yesterday 
evening he was around about here and he did a tack, lazy tack out during the night it was quite quite solid winds you know 30 35s he would have been getting and uh, three three and a half meter seas and then he came back in during the day and now he's starting to run out of breeze again because he's in the lee but at least it's um, a, a little bit more enjoyable for him i'm just going to build this up a bit now and i'll get rid of the tracks again just hit that I'll leave him a little snail trail, just so you can see a tail. Um, so yeah, so you can see now he's got very little wind again, uh, 1.7 knots, but he seems to be tacking out again. Uh, so we're uh, very hard to pick his moves from here, because this is probably only, you know, where he is now, he's probably only getting, you know, 5 to 10 knots, and as he goes out, it'll increase. He'll probably stand off during the night. I'm surprised he's not maybe trying to get it up here, but he's not in a hurry and he knows it's going to swing. What happens here in Tasmania, they have a really good um, uh, repeater system for VHF radio. They've effectively got complete coverage around the coast on VHF for any yachts that are out here, fishermen and so on, for weather forecasting. And it extends quite a, quite a distance offshore. So uh, we know Ian's getting all those weather forecasts uh, every four hours or so. And so he's quite comfortable what's going on and he probably knows what's behind him because I'll just explain, you'll see it come in here. Um, oh, okay, first of all, I'll give you the distances just to show you what's likely to happen here for his um, progress going forward. Uh, so to the turn point, there's 31 miles there. And then you've got about, without bending corners, you've got 36. So about 70 miles, only about 70 miles away. If he was doing four, five knots, then that'd be uh, um, 15 hours or so, you know, something like that. And uh, it's now seven o'clock here. So that's sort of like early morning tomorrow. But what will actually probably happen will depend on a few interesting things. And so I'll come back bit smaller so you can see there's a big system coming in behind him. I'm going to toggle this through. One, two, three, I'm counting the hours, four. You see he ain't got much wind, so he's not going to move for four hours. So there's five hours, so that's to midnight tonight, and he's still going to be 70 miles out. So, uh, and you can see there's a bit more. So midnight tonight, he's 70 miles out, then it's going to come in light, um, and he's going to go a little bit. It'll, it'll start moving again, so that's... Uh, uh, this is now coming through, that's 12 hours from now. So this is seven o'clock in the morning. So I'm sort of expecting at the bottom of Bruni Island here about seven o'clock tomorrow morning, something like that. And then if we, because um, you can see there's got this solid flow coming, so I'm gonna build it up a bit bigger. Um, this is, um, okay, so this is Bruni Island, Adventure Bay, very famous for Captain Cook when he came up and uh, my great mate Captain Bly on the Bounty came in here as well before he headed across to uh, uh, Tahiti to get the breadfruit. So a uh, bit of history down here. Um, so he'll be down here, but you can see this is um, pretty much uh, tomorrow morning. There's very little wind. Now, if he wanted a motor, it's only like 40 miles from there, 30-odd 30, 30 miles, 35 miles. He could do it in about seven hours. I don't think he will. I think he's going to sit there for a while. And we'll have to wait for the breeze to come up. So there's an, so it's 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. He should be moving up by then, 12, 1, 2. Uh, right when I've got a doctor's appointment, bugger. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so we'll, uh, we'll work on that. We may see him mid-afternoon tomorrow. That's my uh, gut feeling on this one. So uh, uh, watch this space and we will, um, uh, I think he's already on one-hour trackers. So you can follow that in and uh, we'd likely to see him local time sometime mid-afternoon or, or something like that tomorrow, but we'll see. So what's happening to, uh, what's happening to uh, Jeremy? Let's just push this, oh, hang on a sec. I'll get that off of there. Why is it not coming up? We should be able to get right down to the marina here. Um, why is that not going? Here we go, radio. I'll show you exactly where he is and explain Hobart here. We can keep going right in. In fact, the accuracy of all this is very succinct and very cool. Um, here he is. I think I can keep going. Yes. Okay, so you're now looking at Central Hobart. And um, this is Constitution Dock in here where the Sydney Hobart boats go. I might be able to get up one more. And you'll see exactly where he is if you... Oh, anyway. Um, this is um, Fish Frenzy Restaurant here, very very cool, Muir's, and he's right on the end of the dock, he's still there. So what's happened is he's cleared customs, immigration, quarantine have got him uh, 
uh, under uh, controls at the moment. So, and he's just in the last hour or so been given permission to slip the boat. Okay, so um, uh, Jason, great mate here, is uh, doing a lot of running around for us here. Been helping Jeremy all day, uh, and uh, Jeremy's now moved into a hotel for a couple of days. Get some good sleep, nice shower, uh, get someone else to cook him some food. He was allowed off the boat this morning. Uh, fortunately, and then we'll be going around the corner here tomorrow to the um, uh, Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania, which is right here, and the slipway's right there. Uh, we'll get it up, and I think the deal will be that we've got to collect the barnacles off the boat, and uh, they'll be quarantined rubbish and destroyed later on. So if all goes well, it will be slipping tomorrow. And uh, then once that happens, you've spoken to Copper Coat about what should best be done, and uh, the decision's still out whether to paint over it or... Uh, but either way, it's got to be buffed up, and uh, yeah, that decision's out yet on what's going to happen uh, before he sets off again. So uh, that's the latest on Jeremy. He's very happy. Uh, oh, just what I think of it, if you see any comments coming up now on GGR Facebook uh, that says, you know, go with a star or something, just, just hit it, because uh, you might not see the comments. They're trying to get people to pay us money, which is really strange. It's something Facebook have done. Uh, we don't. We have nothing to do with it. No control over it. Um, just hit it, and you'll see where it says with a star or something. Um, and you'll see that you've got the choice of comments. You know the most relevant or thing. I just do that. Get rid of it. We've got no idea what popped up, but it's but it's where you're supposed to pay us stars. You buy the stars and give us stars. It's really stupid. We don't do that. So if that happens in any of your any of your posts from GGR, just hit that thing and go for the most relevant or all the comments or whatever you want. I just remembered that then. If they keep changing a lot in Facebook. Anyway, I digress. Back to the tracker, sorry. Uh, we'll come down here, go back to the weather. So, um, boom. Okay, so Captain Goog finally out there, but he's got some light winds now uh, for a few days. So he's doing 3.4 knots on track, so it's not as bad as we said before. In, uh, not as bad as we were saying. I mean, a lot better than the headwinds. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. And uh, we'll quickly just push him through for... Uh, hang on, so that's today, we'll push him through for tomorrow. Um, this is tomorrow, yeah, you can see just a general light flow. At least it's light in the right sort of directions. Uh, this is two days ahead. He'll be able to sail across this very nicely. So he's gonna enjoy that. There's the Bounty Islands, he's gotta get around that. He'll be on a nice reach. He's just above it and uh, and then it goes quiet again. When he's out here, he's gonna sit. So nothing dramatic for Captain Goog. And uh, this is the, the big question now, what's happening here? We'll come back to today's weather. There it is. Simon's had plenty of breeze. We, we didn't alert him to that because it was just under, you know, I follow windy uh, of what's going on, but it was sort of like 30 knot forecast and 40 gusting. But it was consistent, like it's a big system here. But he did get a fair bit and he had, you know, five, six metre seas. Um, but you can see the airflow is all the same. So it builds up these big rolling Southern Ocean swells, you know. Um, that should be organised, and he ha I have, haven't seen any um, uh, concerned tweets from him. So uh, he's through it now, it's backing off. Uh, he seems to be having a very nice time. He's been moving quite fast at times. He's back to 5.7, but he was doing 6.7s and stuff before. Uh, so he's made really good progress during the night. This is panning out with Abolish and Kirsten the way we projected yesterday, 6.5 knots for Abolish, and uh, Kirsten's making 5.4. So he's gonna pull away a bit. She's got softer breeze. I think she should probably still be getting the forecast from uh, Peter in New Zealand. And uh, she's come right down to the line to because she knows that there's that this is coming and, and trying to keep away from it. Um, it's a sensible distance there. In fact, let's just have a look how far off she is. She wouldn't want to come any closer, but it's a it's a favorable breeze to blow her away. But it's approximately, it's approximately uh well she's to 12 miles away <laughs> she's 12 miles but it's but she's not at risk of getting blown on that's that's the big thing and uh in terms of the split with abolish it's probably about uh, 116 miles so she's lost out about 30 miles in the last 24 hours and i think you're going to see that continue a bit uh abolish might be using his secret sale i think but anyway that's an interesting subject for later so we'll, um, when he decides to talk about <laughs> uh, Okay, so now we'll come back and see what they're likely to get in the days ahead. 
it's it, the systems here if we go all the way out it's so big it's very easy to pre predict there's not going to be a lot of change from what i suggested yesterday this is a big system you know there's big stuff happening here that's a, a tight little one you know uh, all sort of happening as a by the way jean luc uh, got knocked down and uh, damaged his uh, damaged his uh, lowest bolt on the mast and uh, he was going to go to Argentina but he changed his mind and he's now going to head down around Cape Horn with a damaged mast. He went up, the, up and down the mast about five or six times I think over this period but it's interesting to watch and the other interesting thing here is that um, you may remember um, that Jean-Luc got a big breakaway before it, it, in the start of the race, thought, crikey, has he got a good one? He's only 1,200 miles in front. So that's not bad after all of this. You know, Simon's been pretty much level pegging, and that includes, or not level pegging, but you've got to build into the fact that there was two, uh, no, one extra film drop. So he had to do Cape Town, which cost him a bit of time. So, you know, it's pretty respectable alongside John Luke when you think about it. That probably cost him, might have cost him 600 miles in total uh, if you allow to go up to Cape Town and back down to Cape Town. So generally speaking, Simon's doing, he's sailing really well. I mean, yes, everyone's got winning and losing with weather, but Simon's doing pretty well. So uh, that's uh, and in terms of to Cape Horn right now, only two five, so two and a half weeks if he gets a good run. And uh, distance back to Abolish, I'm gonna build this up to get a bit more of a accurate picture before we look at the weather. So Abolish, I didn't just measure this, did I? No. Uh, okay, 888. So uh, he's uh, Avalish has actually done all right. So I'm slowed down a little bit. It was 900 and something before, and I was projecting that it might extend out, but that was after this quiet patch coming towards uh, the two at the back. So let's just progress that forward now. So here we go. So that was uh, eight o'clock. So you can see this is where. Simon will pick up those couple hundred miles maybe, but we'll see. It's, uh, I'll take it forward to one day, there's six hours, and that's by tomorrow, so they're not gonna move very fast at all, whereas Simon's still sailing. So that's nearly a whole day, that could be a hundred, hundred, hundred odd miles difference there, I suppose, and then coming through to the next day, they're still sitting there. Um, that's midnight, that's a day and a half, we're going very little, and then there's two days. Uh, so that's two days ahead. So you can see in that two days, I reckon uh, Kirsten and Avalish will probably only do, a, you know, maybe 100 miles or so, and Simon will do a couple of hundred. So that 900 you'll see fill out over 1,100 miles, I think. So anyway, but it's all pretty well plain sailing, big high-pressure system here, and 